Great Debaters Contest is brought to you by Safaricom M-Pesa. Hello and welcome to the home of Great Debate, the Great Debaters Contest. I am Mariam Bishar. And I am Austin Yambo. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? We can all call beauty competitions as simply a measure of vanity. So today we're asking, should beauty contests be banned? Proposing the motion, we have Mboni Girls. And opposing the motion, we have Precious Blood Reruta. And both schools have simply said, may the pharaoh win. The first proposer, you have three minutes. Hi, beautiful people. They call me the beautiful Stella Nzisa. Hi, Judge Booker. Today you're beautiful. Do you really need a beauty contest to prove it? You are beautiful today. So that's why I propose the motion. The beauty contest should be banned. Why? I am an African lady with an African figure. Um, and I can't qualify to like contest for the beauty beauty contest, the wild, the Miss Miss, Miss Wild, because of my size. Yeah, you know that. Yeah. Two, it's my complexion. You know Evelyn Abok, the the famous model from Kisumu. She actually said that the in the international contest, most mostly uh, they they are very they they really practice race, racism, because you know the blacks are really disc discriminated, and that's not good. You know, you can't measure beauty. It's not like temperatures, you can measure with a thermometer. Well, it's not like wind direction, you can measure with, with a wind vane or a wind sock. Beauty is relative. It lies in the eyes of the beholder. You know that. Well, I don't need anybody to tell me that I'm beautiful. I just proved, proved it to you. I don't need a contest to tell me that I'm beautiful. So if I contest and, I don't, and, and then I don't win, that lowers my self-esteem. That makes me feel terrible inside me because we are all beautiful. Coincidentally, today, our preacher was preaching about the creation. And you know the most wonderful thing that he said? That, was that God created us in his own image and he liked what he created, actually. That chapter, chapter one, Genesis, ends with God saw his creation and he loved it. He loved his creation. And you know, we need variety. We can't all be a size 36, 24. You know, life is all about variety. To just make it a little bit interesting. You know what I mean? So we are all fearfully and wonderfully made. Miss Tourism this year is from Taita Tavata. Have you seen the road in Taita Tavata? You know that money could have been used to invest on the road to Savo East or Maithaimara. You know? We need that road made. We need the tourists to, to, to drive on a safe road. We need the tourists to drive on a tarmac road. That is what we need. You know the money, all of it could have been channeled, channeled there. Or maybe some other charity job, other than going so indirectly. Directly, all of that money could have gone to a charity job. Because we, in Kenya, actually, we are suffering from poverty. Thank you, beautiful people. First proposer, you have three minutes for your opening statement. I am Kavu Magdalene from Precious Blood Reruta. I stand before you and let me tell you something. I stand before you with firm conviction to oppose this motion. Nobody said you're not beautiful. It depends on what you see. The problem with most of us is that we look at beauty depending on what the eyes see. But have any of you ever taken a step back? What's beneath that? Yes, that is what a beauty contest is all about. Beauty contests are in fact a measure of your character, talent, as well as your physical appearance. If anything, they aim to make sure that a person develops holistically. Well, we say that beauty is vanity. I would like to correct that notion. This is because in a beauty contest, we are trying to move away from the traditional way of looking at a woman. Women were usually looked at as a symbol of beauty. Where does your beauty take you? Oh, it gets you a husband, you get married, have children, and that's pretty much a summary of your life. I don't think any of us wants that to be the A to Z of our life. I think you want to account to more than that. A beauty contest gives you the possibility and the chance for you to account for your beauty in a way that 
actually counts as an achievement. This is because you become a title holder. It gives you an opportunity to go back home and give to your society. Yes, like Taita Taveta, I believe she will go back to her place and she will do something. Take for example, the Angola-born um, beauty queen, Leila Lopez. Yes, she was crowned Miss Universe in the year 2011. Leila Lopez did in fact go back home after representing the Angolan community in the UK. Um, she was named, well, she was practically given the title of Miss Angola UK. She went back home, that was her first step. Then she decided to compete on the international level to represent her country. So I don't quite get the point of racism and all that. Yes, it may be there, but I believe that it depends on a person. It is a personal choice. You have to go back and decide what you are going to do. She came back, yes, and she competed and became Miss Universe. Through that, she has used what the position that she has been given in society, and she has actually started a campaign for all the HIV and AIDS patients. In this campaign, she is fighting for their human rights, and she is also fighting against their discrimination. Well, let me tell you something. Beauty is skin deep. You cannot tell me that what you see in the mirror, that that is all that there is to you. There is more than that. There is your character. There is more than what, beauty is not the only thing that will attract me to a person. Take for example, Cecilia Mwangi. Let's take a local example. Do you mean to tell me that her beauty ends with the title of Miss Kenya? No. We can see that she has a very big and lovely heart. And this is the actual definition of beauty that we are trying to put across. Beauty is not only what we see, but also the way you make us feel. You make us feel beautiful. She went back and she decided that she was going to start an anti-jigger campaign. I would like to tell you all, beauty is how you perceive yourself and you are beautiful regardless of what people say. These are words by Christina Aguilera. Thank you, beautiful people. Second proposal. You have three minutes. When we are holding beauty context today, it's not like it used to be in the, Af in the traditional African society, whereby you've said that women were looked at as a, as a sign of beauty. No, that's not what used to happen. What used to be there is that, yes, they are looked to be, they were, they were said to be beautiful, and that's why they got husbands and the likes. But also other things like hard work were considered. When we talk about beauty context today, we are bringing about gender bias because we are talking about beauty in, female, in, the, in the females and not in the males. Do they, let me just ask a simple question. Who has heard of a Mr. World? Who has? Mr. Kenya? This beauty context have also led to They've also led to erosion of African culture. When you look at what is being done today, actually, beauty contexts are Western, not African. So when we embrace this beauty context, we are not embracing our African culture. This is to mean that we are embracing the Western world and looking down upon what we have in our country and in Africa as a whole. In this beauty context, anybody, somebody can do anything so as to achieve what it is that they want. They can go to the extremes of losing their moral values so as to be said to be beautiful. Look at what is happening in, in today's world. Some people will go to an extent of selling their bodies so as to be branded beautiful. Have you ever imagined that in the African culture, somebody will just walk in a bikini so as to portray that they're beautiful? I don't think so. So indeed, beauty context should be banned. Thank you. The second opposer, you have three minutes. My name is Nzasu from Precious Blood Jujuta. To the second proposal, you said that you've never heard of that beauty contest is gender biased. Well, haven't you ever heard of Mr. University Kenya, Mr. USIU, Mr. UON? Well, what do you understand by beauty? Uh, maybe should refer the dictionary. Beauty isn't only restricted to the 
women gender only. Uh, Judge Booker, I like your hair. Wouldn't you want to participate in the darling hair competition? So why should we abolish gender? Why, why should we abolish beauty contest? Beauty contests raise the self-esteem of many people in this world. You talked about people going to the extent of bleaching themselves. Well, I know of, uh, many people who've bleached themselves, but they don't necessarily attend or participate in beauty contests. Um, uh, I know the story of uh, Ms. The Ms. Israel, she's called Lena Abagio. She was abducted, stabbed, and raped in Milan, Italy at the age of 18, six months before she participated in a beauty contest. And when she went to participate, guess what? She won. And when she won, she decided that she was going to stop this abuse of rape. Well, isn't that what we want? Why should we have uh, ban this beauty contest when this beauty contest are the same things which help change our world. So when you say that this money should be invested into community projects, most of us, Miss World, Miss Kenya are the ones who actually sponsor it. For example, Miss Cecilia Mangi, we know that she did so much in uh, removing jiggers from very underprivileged uh, children. Uh, you say that because you have, uh, you talked about racism, well, I'm not black, clearly, and I know I'm beautiful, but if you went for a contest, I'm sure you don't have an equal opportunity of winning me because you don't have the assets like you call them. Um, there are also contests of every kind of people. You talked about because you're big, you wouldn't be able to contest. Well, have you heard of Miss Jumbo, which is for beauty, beautiful people who are plus size? Um, I, I'm sure you've never heard of that. Well, uh, you talked about uh, this beauty contest consider height, weight, and size in determining people to contest for beauty contest. Well, don't you also consider the same factors when getting clothes to wear? I don't think uh, that's such a letdown. Um, so therefore, people, beautiful people, I don't think we should abolish this. If the government itself cannot abolish smoking, which is actually killing thousands of people, why should it abolish beauty contests when beauty contests do not do any harm to anyone apart from the insecure people? Thank you. Take part in the M challenge by sending your short song, rap, or poem about Safaricom M Pesa on WhatsApp, and you could win 1,000 shillings in Safaricom airtime. May we have questions? My name is Grace Washanga from Bishop Gachimugandu Girls. I have a question for the proposing team. You said something about modeling being Western and not supporting culture. Take, for example, Miss Tourism here in Kenya. I think it really does support culture. You also said something about it discriminating people with different sizes. Well, I think you should know of uh, Miss Plus Size Kenya. She's very beautiful and has a modeling agency that supports curvy women. And then there's Ajuma Nasarenya, be a city model Africa. It supports lean models. So really, I don't find it discriminative. Please expound on that. A question for the opposers. I'm Mohamed Abdullahi representing Light Akali. My question goes to the whole team. Much of this beauty contest, especially those held in universities, these students go even the extra mile of servicing the judges at a place not preferred to be mentioned here. How do we justify that? And Will we allow that to continue at the expense of beauty contest are useful? Thank you. May we have the third proposer take the stage. They call me the glamorous Aching Jane, and I would like to answer the questions that have been posed. Now, somebody asked that culture and discrimination. Now, let me pose a simple question. Somebody asked Judge Booker if she is beautiful, she'll be able to participate in a contest. Are you able to bear the publicity? that is exposed in the beauty contest. Taking 
photos where you're half naked and you expect your parents to watch you and be proud of you. Is that how we're raising our children nowadays? On to my other point. I, I greatly oppose propose that the beauty contests should be banned. Reason being is that some of them, after you lose the contest, you find that you're in, a very, in, you're in a very emotional period where you have low self-esteem because you think that the crowd doesn't see you as beautiful. It doesn't see you as standing out as somebody who is of substance like the, like the rest. How, how, how does this affect you? Some of them end up abusing drugs. Others, as somebody from Light Academy quoted, the contests that are held in university, how are you so sure of somebody's character within a month? It takes ages to find a spouse, isn't it? You date for quite a long time so that you can find a spouse. Now what makes you think that somebody who is dressed up and comes arguing out that I am beautiful and I need to be awarded because my character is this, this and that, that is just for show. You do not really know these people. So I doubt if it's really a matter of testing the character. Also, some of them end up doing extreme extremes just to enter into this contest. Some of them fast and refuse taking food just to fit in the correct size, that is 36, 24. And they end up with diseases such as anorexia, nervosa, and I think that is not something we really want to see in the public. Beauty contests also, some of them, they do encourage school dropouts because you think I'm beautiful and the crowd is, is, is accepting me as somebody who is beautiful. So I get this and I get money. I don't really value my education. So how, does this, how is this helping in the beauty contest? Also, we have the er erosion of African culture. Africans, morally, we do not advocate for such publicity. So I do not think it is correct to hold beauty contests all in the name of proving to be someone who is beautiful. As we said, beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. Thank you. Third opposer, you have three minutes to respond. My name is Angela Shule from Precious Blood Deruta. I'm here to strongly oppose this motion, but first I shall answer your questions. To the gentleman from Light, who asked um, about the immorality in beauty pageants. Um, I am only familiar with one example of such immorality in a beauty pageant, and it happened not very recently and has never happened again, and the person who was involved in this was expelled from the school. So um, out, there's only one example out of the millions of beauty pageants we've seen in the past. So will you stop sitting on your chair because one chair had previously broken underneath someone else? I don't think so. To the Mboni girls who said that um, beauty pageants promote immorality because people go around half naked and even ask Judge Booker whether she would be comfortable with this. Let me inform you that in beauty pageants, the the bikini shooting or models strutting around in bikinis was banned about five years ago, so I don't know where you got your research. Um, moving on to my point, we cannot afford to ban these beauty pageants because they are a source of foreign exchange to the countries involved. For example, in Indonesia, which hosted last year's Miss World, recorded a, about a 5% increase in its gross domestic product. And this is highly attributed to the, to the Miss World con contest held there previously. Um, it was the host country and accommodated about 120 other contestants from different countries around the world. These different people needed hotels to sleep in, they needed places to eat, they needed clothes to dress, which they bought from Indonesia and boosted the economy. Moving on, um, the, these beauty pageants are a source of income. These models, they, they rely on these beauty pageants to earn livelihood. They need all this, they need the pageants to get money for, to support themselves and their families. So why would we put them off the paycheck? Because it is apparently viewed as a in proper judging of beauty. Thank you. We'll now get closing statements from the proposers. You have one minute. I would like to quote a verse. It's from Psalms 139 verse 14. And it says, I praise you because I am fearfully 
and wonderfully made. I do not think you need to test God's perfection in making you. You do not need to attend a beauty contest just to prove that God made you beautiful. You do not need to waste resources in registration and other people's funding just to prove that God made you beautiful. Instead of wasting money in taking part in, in beauty contests, we can actually use this money to do more constructive things like this, the great debaters, you prove out your points, you prove out your mind, you prove out how intelligent you are, something that can be reflected back into, into the society, something, something that can be used to assist. How does a beauty contest help? Just, it just erodes the mind of the society when people watch some things that are actually time-wasting. So I think we do not need to test if God made us beautiful, because as he quoted earlier on, we are beautifully and wonderfully made. So I strongly propose that we should ban beauty contests. Bonnie girls, we rest our case. Thank you. Opposers, you have one minute for your final submission. Before I close, uh, my dear uh, uh, proposal, if you don't uh, publicity simple, take your seat and let others who want it to do it. You say that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Well, okay, then why don't you take the courage, take the step to participate in beauty contests? Great debaters contest is a measure of intellectual talent, while beauty contests are a measure of beauty talent. And before I leave, a base point without the sound or sight of beauty is a Poverty stricken day, and a succession of such days leads to fatality. Therefore, boys, wouldn't you want to see a beautiful girl on TV? Girls, wouldn't you want to see a handsome, a handsome boy on TV through this contest? Why should we lock the doors for people who actually want to venture into this? What if beauty is the only talent they have? We cannot limit them to, uh, to just sit down and not have space to advocate or to represent themselves where they're best at. Thank you. I don't know what to say, but I'm a little disappointed. I think the stakes are really high, and the bar has been set very high. And so going forward, you need to pay attention to what the rest are doing so that you're not left behind. All the best to the two schools. Uh, much was expected from the two teams. The fact that you are both uh, of the female gender, which is very uh, known to participate in beauty contests, I guess in a highly way, men I guess are picking up. We were expecting that we would hear more. You're good speakers all across the board, however, average research. And so from us as the judges, I want to believe it wasn't executed well. All the best to the two teams. To the two teams, Mboni and Precious Blood. What about advertisements? What about entertainment industry? If we are going to ban beauty contests because of these other reasons, what about in the music industry where we see the aspect of beauty being really preached, so to speak? Research and try to look at the motion from all angles. Precious Blood managed to convince the judges that beauty contests are here to stay. They have 70%. Give them a hand. The opponents, Mboni girls, have 66%. That makes Precious Blood our winners. From us here at the Great Debaters Contest, it's goodbye till next time. It's been a joy having you. I'm Mariam Bishar. And I'm Austin Yembok. Catch you next time. Contest was brought to you by Safaricom Mpesa.